four, three, two. We're gonna make it, <laughs> and you'll make it the wrong show. Oh my goodness. Hello and welcome Hello. to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Keisha Boy. This is my co-host, officially Jorge, and Coffee on the Go. Yes. From, you, from you the portico. Take, look, you can take Mocha in the Morning. Yes. And the particles blend with you. Yeah, everywhere you go. So okay. I'm just saying. How are you, honey? <laughs> awesome. How was your week? Um, it was good, girl. I mean, yeah. you know, we got one more show to do for one everybody. One more show before the season closes. Right. And I was wearing something uh -huh. that I thought I wore previously. So that's a good thing. Always remember the planet backup outfit. I told them y'all don't care. <laughs> like, for real, ain't nobody paying attention. I love the way your hair is twisting and shouting today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But we have My a busy kids. show. <laughs> we do have a busy show. We're so glad that you are yeah. choosing to be with us this Friday morning. <laughs> what? But first, a little cafe. Yes, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Welcome back to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. Once again, I'm your host, Keisha, and this is my co-host, officially Jorge, and we have plenty of steamers for you yes. to talk to us. Well, first so. of all, um, this week on the show, oh, we yes. had our, our guest contributor last week, yes. Ms. Val turned over her fourth book. Awesome. So we have a little um, bold roast yes. coming up later in the show. Make sure you stay tuned for that. So this is cute. I got to read it on my way to Philadelphia, yeah. so I'm like, ooh, it's, a, it's like a jewelry box full of gems up in here. So. Awesome. So anyway, more about the steamers up. Uh, yes. But just stay tuned for bold roast. Yes. Um, Hey, Brooklyn! Brooklyn in the building! Hey, Notorious! So, yes, they have decided to name a street after me. Oh, okay. So I, I don't even live there. You don't even live there? <laughs> no. Oh my God. Uh, all jokes aside, uh, Notorious B.I.G. <laughs> it's going to be Christopher Wallace Way. Oh, wow. All right. One time for Christopher I kinda, Wallace. I kind of think it's a bit late now. Like, but, but like, yeah, like never... where's that coming from? Like, all right? of a sudden. I don't know how long the street is. You know? Mm -hmm. mm. Anyway, well, congratulations. So that, yeah, congratulations, and because uh, you deserve more than just a straight. That's right. Uh, the other thing is, oh, I'm so excited about this. Nippy. <gasps> Woo! So, Whitney Houston's estate. Yes. Well, they were talking about like going on tour mm -hmm. with Whitney and the Hologram. Oh my goodness! Now, okay. That now check like... this out. In Vegas, they have the Michael Jackson show yep. with an amazing hologram, and every time that comes up. Everyone's crying, right? Mm -hmm. And the technology is getting better and better. Now, there was a point where Christina Aguilera also did a performance with a Whitney Houston hologram. Okay. And then Madonna just did a performance at the Billboard Awards with eight other Madonnas, right? Holograms. Yeah. This going to be a tour. Wow. I remember first seeing Whitney Houston live at the Taj Mahal, and it was like, oh my goodness, like, wow. Amazing. So I think this is so great for the fans, and they're already doing stuff like this, like, in uh, in South Korea with a lot mm -hmm. of pop stars. Yeah. And I think this right here is just going to be the tea. Awesome. Well, yay. We look forward to seeing you. You get tickets. I, duh. I know, you know, you know we're going to be in that video. Right. Okay. Now. Yes. Yeah, speaking of tea. Yes. Miss Sabrina Fulton. I love every single bit of the story. Is getting ready to run for office in Miami. Look at her. Day. Look at all the Trayvon Martin. Yes. Trayvon Martin, Martin's mom. Is saying, you know what? I'm ready to start making a political impact. Um, so she is going to run for commission, mm -hmm. Miami Dade yep, Commission, yep, yep, mm -hmm. and has a voice, and she really wants to push for gun control. Yeah, or and gun violence yeah. prevention, rather. What What's really awesome is, like, before our eyes, mm -hmm. right? 
all other women who have flavor to mocha in the morning right. and who live in this black girl magic world, yes. you know, they're out there making the difference, doing the thing. And doing the and work. And this is what needs to happen. Yeah. You want things to change, then you need to be the, the person. Change. The change. The change. Absolutely. You know, so I think that's super awesome. And what a great way uh, to honor, her you son. know, her son, right? Absolutely. Uh, so that was super. I love that story. Yes. I think it's great. We'll be right back with Piping Hot. Piping Hot. I mean, up. <laughs> we are back with the mocha in the morning. I am Keisha Boyd and my co-host officially Jorge, and it's time for our Piping hot piping segment, hot. So but hot. before we get going, let's introduce. Yes, we have some fabulous contributors this week. We have one of our favorites, Miss Jade, around the world tour <laughs> with special guest Escape, kicking in with Kia Shakur. <laughs> Hi, Miss Kia. What was all of that? That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> she was like, is he talking about me? I know, Can I'm I looking talk about your like... cheekbones for a second? They I... are golden. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we also have for the very first time, yes, yes the queen of all tea in all shade, Miss Professional Hostess. And you know what? Can slam the law in your face in a court of law. Hey, Elle, how are you? Hey, guys, how are you doing? Hey, you giving us that braid respect. <laughs> 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 awesome queen i see you girl all right let's jump into this week's piping hot segment starting with your boy right which we tend to argue whose boy it really is well he ain't so ours. i'm just gonna say he's your man he's not my man my man is chance l boy okay <laughs> And Ben Carson ain't nobody's boy. Okay. Yes. Well, he is. He's Donald Trump's boy. Yeah. Well, he okay. likes cookies, apparently. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oreo. How, how do you eat your Oreos? <laughs> oh wait, are we talking about cookies or, or are we talking about a government? A government associate. <laughs> Listen, take a, a look at this video of Ben Carson. Just oh god. Just don't have anything in your mouth when you're watching it. Right. Oreo <laughs> is an Oreo. R no, not an Oreo. Uh, uh, an R E O R E O. Real estate. What's the O stand for? E organization. Owned real estate owned. That's what happens when a property goes to foreclosure. We call it an R E O. Mm -hmm. And F H A loans have much higher R E O S. That is, they go to foreclosure rather than to loss mitigation. Listen, mm. listen. I mean, basic oh. knowledge. Of a, of, of a department that you're running? Yeah. I mean, that's just mm. simple stuff. Yeah. Like, who? I'm just. I'm I'd just look, I would rather Ben Carson help me out with just the interior decorating. Listen, he can't even help me with that. Do you hear me? <laughs> I might call his wife first. Hey, oh, my God. Hey, Ella, what do you think about that? I just want to know, how is Ben Carson still in business? Like, who is actually going to him still? Like, I would not go to him to just pump my gas, let alone put it as a government official. It's ridiculous. This is true. Kia? I'm with Elle. My whole thing is, why was he chosen for this job instead of being Surgeon General? Wouldn't that have made more sense since he was a, a physician? Why are you, why is he the home development Whatever that is, a name I don't know either. That's why I'm not the boss of that. Right. So why was he chosen for that? It makes no sense. And this is not the first time he said something stupid. And then him and his wife with that stupid forty thousand dollar table he got in trouble for. Like it's it's, it's a wrap. Let's wrap this up. Absolutely. Listen, now look, he time. don't even get no more time on Mocha in the morning. All right, and moving on. <laughs> Listen, Arifa. Yes, the queen. The of queen soul. of soul. The hey, queen of soul. Detroit's finest. Rock City. She had a will. Yes. Three of them. One, two, three. Three. They were trying to what? say, yeah. Her estate is worth like $80 million. So what does this mean? Like, it, what? Court. Hello? Because I wonder how much crap they've already like. Look, what you got? 
Hmm. Girl, I want, want it. it. <laughs> what I need. Girl, you gonna give it? Listen, yeah. Jorge is trying to be in the wheel, but yeah, it's not I'm possible. To... I see a little bit. I, I, I'm Do glad I, to I, I know don't. that she actually had a will because that's like the worst. Like Prince and these mm -hmm. big mega stars that don't leave a will for their estate. It's just crazy. Yeah. It's like it takes you not even a day to write down i want pookie to have this i want my auntie to have this i want this person to have my catalog i will not leave i will not to leave me. anything to tie like whatever have some type of will in place kia what do you kia, think about kia. these three written yeah like i want to first of all who are you gonna leave all your wigs to i'm sure you have <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute don't throw a joke when i have to make a serious comment that's not it was perfect, that just threw me off. It was perfect, but I mean, I, I don't know because again, don't wills and, and and you know, Elsa lawyers, she can tell us don't wills have to be like notarized or signed by other people before they're even valid. So, if, and then why is there three? Like, I'm confused by this whole situation. I'm glad there's something because she has four sons and have to split this $80 million um, estate. But how, how do you know which one's right? So, L, please help. I don't know. Yeah, L, what do you, what is, how does that work? Well, it really, really is based on whether or not um, it was notarized, whether or not it followed the states and trust laws that are applicable in the state. I think she's California based. And so the fact that she has three, was, was it dated, were there witnesses? I mean, there's, it's going to be a lot of contention. It'll be interesting to see, because it said handwritten, it'll be interesting to see if any of these wills are even valid off the face of it, right? So th these wills might not ever be actually considered or used. Yeah, Ooh. I know ain't nobody flipping in the house writing notes and trying to hide them, right? Like a <laughs> Smearing it out with their finger to make it look old. I'm gonna write myself in the wheel real quick. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm gonna say, Kia, make sure you get yours like notarized. If you need a witness, we're here for you. Because I am donating all of my wigs to the <laughs> in the morning show, and if I do pass away, I want them a part of the set design, like each on a different pedestal. <laughs> That's where their home will be. Gotcha. We'll thank you in advance, we'll honey. We'll make that happen. Oh my gosh. Now, a disappointing uh, highlight for me. Actor Jason Mitchell, who you guys may know from um, The Shy. Yes. Um, from The Mud. The Mud. Mm -hmm. Mudbound. 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 And Career the blowing movie up. With, with Dr. Dre. The, um, oh, Straight Out of Compton. Straight Out of Compton. Yeah. Yes, that was his, his um, breakout film. He was dismissed by everybody. Yes. His agent, his his um He's straight out of a career. Straight out of <laughs> he is definitely straight out of a career. He's been accused of sexual harassment by his co star Tiffany Boone and other women as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, really? Uh, like mm. I'm so disappointed because I really like his character. I really like his acting. Well, you like the character he portrays. He portrays. You're we're right. Not, we don't. We're not too happy about the his real ca character. His real character. Well, and they said the girl said she had to have her fiance on set anytime she taped a mm -hmm. scene with him because he was just not backing off. And the, and the question is, if she was complaining to the studios about this, why didn't they do something about it? Mm. Why did she have to bring her fiance? I'm just saying. Um, we all know how how this goes. I mean, Keisha, you and I are in PR. We know how this goes. Um, when most actors or actresses get accused of something crazy, their agency just doesn't drop them all of a sudden. Like his agency dropped him. Like Correct. it's one thing to lose jobs, but your agency dropped you. That means these allegations are have been serious, and more than one people have come forward. Um, the girl who accused him, she's actually being shamed right now, saying that she's just trying to take down another black guy, this and that. And people need to stop with that. The fact that this girl had to have her fiance come on set. That means something was seriously wrong. Like no, none of us. We're all grown women. We all do not have to bring our husbands and boyfriends to work just to get through the day. Come that's on now. True. That, I that's, do not bring my husband on set because we are right. grown I women. I mean, I, I, I think it's crazy and it's so sad because his career just started getting popped off in exactly. 2015. Exactly. That's when he started getting popping, and he's got a lot of roles. I mean, he was in Kong Skull Island, Detroit, Disaster Artist. He's in The Shy. He was in Superfly. He's got three other movies coming up that he's been dropped from. It's it blows me away that in 2019, men are not, men still don't get it. Y'all still don't get it. They don't get it. And I think that they don't think that, mm. that they think they're invincible, but you're not. Hey, and that now, should be evident. Yeah. From a legal perspective, what do you think is in his future? Not work. I mean, he might have some sexual harassment lawsuits that come out based on it, but 
I mean, we don't really the the hurt that he's going to receive is all the future pay he's not going to receive, right? He was on a, a trajectory going upwards, right? I mean, I think we all liked him because he felt like around the way dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you see him exactly. in movies, yeah. and he feels very, really like, oh, that that's my neighbor Craig. You know what I mean? And so that like familiarity felt good and I really saw him really going far but unfortunately he hasn't learned the lesson and kind of to Kia's point what will you learn the problem is is that people have been men especially have been raised this way sometimes they don't even realize that what they're doing is wrong unfortunately Ooh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's deep that's right well let's talk about a man who is doing something really 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 right listen Robert F. Smith, the billionaire. Billionaire. The richest black man in the world. Listen, he was uh, at Morehouse mm -hmm. College and was the keynote speaker and received a doctor degree, mm -hmm. honorary doctorate. But honey, he paid off every graduating student's student loan debt. Mm. Do you hear me? I'm talking about millions of dollars, yeah, millions of, dollars. of student loan debt, Girl, which I is, oh my been like, God. Look, if I would've known he was coming, I just would've took out some extra loans. Listen, <laughs> thank you to him. I mean, this is this is what it's about. Yeah. This is what it's about to, to really build generational wealth, is to help those, especially our youth, to get what they need, get ahead up on themselves. Like, there are students who had, like, $90,000 of debt. Like, they're starting off with having to find an extra seven, dollars $800 a month just to pay the student loans back. So, I'm so elated that the billionaire, you know, decided to sow a seed into these young men. I'm so excited about that. Seriously, like, I am. That is, like, the best. We don't have Jen here today because she would have oh, oh, she would have ate this oh, yes. up For today lunch, about this student loan debt and being erased. But Kia, what do you think about uh, Mr. Mr. Smith's donation to these students? The estimated amount is forty million dollars. He will end up paying off from this class alone in student loan debt, which is a crazy amount. But I think it's great. Um, but I just got to be petty for a second because this is popping up all over on um, social media. <laughs> a lot of black women are saying this is another way that black men and men are put above women. And my opinion on that is is that this these black men coming into the world um, not having student loan debt, meaning when they marry one of us black women or women in general, we're going into a healthy marriage with no debt and we can start building generational wealth. So let's cut the bullshit, okay? Ooh. And just be happy that someone is paying for the student loan debt from these guys. Look, I don't mind if right. anybody pays anything for me. I think it's crazy actually how people can find a negative in this, right? This guy has just like blessed so many people they've blessed so many families it's not necessarily if you if you've been a graduate or if you graduated from college or any other program you realize that a lot of the times when you're a student it's not just you your whole family is involved and so he has blessed not only just that person who's receiving that that student loan um debt like getting wiped off but he's also blessing the family that helped and support that person so right. it, it yeah. does go generational it is for the black family it's ridiculous that people are finding issues yeah. with it he's amazing so, oh oh speaking of that oprah with the clap back with the clap back, oh, on clap back. So they were saying oh because oprah is you know this billionaire that she needs to do what yeah. you know this guy didn't oprah was like wait a minute yeah because she was just you, a, yeah listen. she was in colorado at a commencement yes. speech and made uh, a donation to the school yes yeah and she was talking about um you know she just surprised actually the new jersey principal who helps us you know students high school students and mm -hmm. gave them a five hundred thousand dollar donation so oprah was like wait a minute just because i don't publicize everything i do don't come for me yeah i got this Did she see what you see what she said he said, well, basically, I put like over 400 men. So I didn't make a donation to their school. What I did is they didn't have any debt because I gave them scholarships. Hello. I was like, don't come for me. You know, Oprah, like, Oprah. Oprah got like 5,000. She got a whole call center just watching her Instagram. Why would you do that? Right. Now, I hope that wasn't you who made that comment. I would never, I would never be so stupid to ever disrespect the queen. Like, do not come for Oprah. That's like coming for Beyonce or Rihanna. It's just a no. No, they can say the craziest thing. You do not come for them. They are the holy grail, right? Like, yeah. what is wrong with y'all? So I'm, actually, I was really happy that that clap back. back. But and the comment was stupid. Like we all know, Oprah gives money. Did she open up a school in Africa? 
Africa, like yes. the woman is giving money to kids all over the planet. Yes. What do you want her to do? Cut it, cut out, cut it out, y'all. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And speaking of Oprah. And another queen of who's becoming the queen of broadcast media. Hello. Let's talk about Miss King. Queen Gail King <laughs> is doing the daggone thing with CBS this morning. Look at that. Okay. Squad she, goals. Hello. Squad goals. Squad Seriously. goals. Okay. She like, look, Bestie done taught me the ropes. Yeah. Now I'm about to get this guap. Okay. Yeah. They doubled her salary and she yes. is first and front and center for yeah. CBS this morning. I'm so happy to see that. It's really awesome. And she's like a straight shooter. I, what, I read about, what I read, she said that basically like, look, if you don't have anything to say, don't say anything. She doesn't like all that like. <laughs> right. Hey, we'll be right back. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of thing. Like, she wants to have like real, real chemistry. Yeah. And it's okay if you don't. Like, right. she's not, I mean, she can always go back and work for her, but she don't care. But yeah. she's bringing in the ratings. And she took Charlie Rose's job. A uh, predatory white man. Predatory white man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. sorry about it. Under scrutiny, yes, she yeah. did take that job. Without sexually harassing anybody. Hmm. Wow. Hello. Isn't that amazing? Hello. On her own. What black women can do. Talent. 75% <laughs> you still? <laughs> I'm, I'm inching a little bit closer. <laughs> All right. Now, let's talk about a few brothers. Let's, a couple of brothers, yeah. actually. We have to talk about sports, yeah. which means I will not participate in this conversation okay. that does not have Serena Williams in it. Okay, you okay. know what? Steph Curry and Seth Curry played in the finals for the West Coast. Say that three times. Steph and Seth, Steph Steph. And Seth Curry. Say it three times. And I think that Miss L, I mean, I mean, the Golden State Warriors wiped them out. And Steve, Steph Curry was like, somebody had to lose. But I'm glad yeah. I got a chance, you know, I got a chance to play with my brother. Elle, I know you're a big basketball fan. What is, what do you have to say about this game? No, this series. I think it's hilarious. I think that Steph Curry is such a big brother because he was like, somebody got to lose. It ain't gonna be me. Pretty much is what <laughs> is how I ended that in my head. Like, <laughs> he stunned him. He stunned him really quick. But they had a really beautiful moment where they actually exchanged uh, jerseys at the end of the game, and they were like rocking each other's jerseys. I mean, how many brothers can say that they went off to the they went to the playoffs together? Quite frankly, that's awesome. like that's amazing moment. And Seth Curry, like he did really well. His team got completely just completely wiped for with by Golden State. But Seth had some really great moments, some great three pointers. He he shows that he has that Curry blood in him. So I actually think that it did some help for his career. Yeah. And Any words on you, Kia? Who you who you voting for? I mean, I'm always going to be a Golden State fan. I love Golden State, but I'm also a fan of both of their parents. I mean, yes. you've raised two amazing athletes, and they're both really great fathers. I mean, yeah. they're great fathers, two great husbands, and the fact that they can get on the yeah. court and just have a good time together is, is great. They had a great sportsmanship, and I feel bad because their parents actually have said, this is the worst experience of our lives because oh. we want both of them to win, and they can't win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But look, that money going in the same pot, though. Listen, I at mean, the end of the day, know, the whole family gonna be together. That's true. You know, at the barbecue. At the, at the barbecue. It's very amazing. Well, Interesting yeah. thing is, you know, Nike had a huge deal with Seth Curry. Uh huh. Was trying to get a deal with Seth Curry, and it was before he went viral. It was before he like really hit it, and they were lowballing him. Mm -hmm. And then Under Armour came and swooped him up. So now Seth Curry, I don't know if you've seen his sneakers, but he has Under Armour sneakers. Which wow. are fire, like straight fire. Have you seen them? Yes. Well, 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 speaking of fire though, yes. like we may or may not have the opportunity to see them because like if these tariffs go into play. Yes, because Donald Trump is playing with our feet. Yes, okay? so, Elle, I don't know who you <laughs> voted for, but like, I'm Listen. always going for like a Jordan yeah. or, you know, but, but. But Nike and Adidas, you know, Basically, they're like, yo, these tariffs on shoes would be like super catastrophic for yeah. our industry. Like yeah. people won't be able to, able to afford them. I think Trump is just really, he's just, this is what happens when you have, this is what happens when mediocrity meets wealth. Uh -huh. That's what he as a yeah. president. Mediocrity is a bit much for him. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> it's kind of like, like when scam meets spam. Listen. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. 
No bueno. We want to thank our Mocha in the Morning contributors. Don't forget to catch Kicking It with Kia and also her weekend recap that comes out every single week after our main show. And also, a special thank you to Miss L from All Tea No Shade that drops every single Wednesday on all major podcasting yes. services that are out there. Good morning, all our Mocha in the Morning Marvels. Don't go anywhere because coming up next, we have our bold rose with Valtrenda. Yeah, she's all these gems dropping the gems, honey. Dropping the gems. Don't miss it. And I'm snatching them. <laughs> Good morning, you are watching Mocha in the Morning. I'm officially Jorge, and I'm so happy that I get to bring you a bold rose, where we go out there and we highlight and bring to the forefront, and bring to you those movers and shakers that we call Mocha Marvels doing the thing. And this week, I am so happy to welcome, for the very first time on the show, Miss Valtrenda. Hey, girl. You're all I'm trying. I'm trying. That's awesome. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, uh -huh. congratulations. Thank you. Um, this is going to be your fourth yes. book, okay? Yes. And uh, Val Trender and I, we go back a hot way minute. Way, way, way back. All the residue is off of you, yeah. girl. Isn't that wonderful? I know. I'm so so it's been really, really exciting to kind of watch your career blossom, yeah, you know, you. Uh, when you came out with your first book, and then everything you've done since then. So catch us up okay. really quick on what you've been up to, girl. So I did um, I my, my second degree mm -hmm. in psychology um, since then, and since then I've also been able to host the Urban Cafe, the wow, radio show. Wow, I know, I see you got into that. I actually got onto three radio shows wow. since then. So I was all the way in Africa at one point. Burr. Not me physically, they didn't take me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the show was all airing all the way in Africa. Um, and then I'm um, also doing a lot of individual counseling sessions now mm -hmm. because my degree is in counseling. Right. And so um, since then, I've been doing a lot of, uh, I launched that part of my business because I own my own business. But that part, the one-on-one the -on -one crisis counseling, yeah. has been the most intimate for me. Wow. So everything else, hosting gigs. I have hosted the Black Heritage Festival here in Tampa Bay for the last four years. Wow. Four years, the Saturday uh, musical show. I've introduced Stokely from Mint Condition. Hey. Uh, Cece Peniston. I love Cece. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, Patrick Queen. Right. And, you know, uh, a lot of other stars. It's just been amazing. since That's awesome. Since the book, since my first book. So many doors have opened. That's awesome. It's always great to see, because when you come in, into connection, mm -hmm. you know, with people like you, it's always great to see, like, what happens, mm -hmm. you know, when they get that that taste and that fever for the flavor yeah. of, like, you know, pursuing this type of career. And I still and don't feel like impact. I've done enough. I feel, I feel like I haven't even done nearly a quarter of what I want to do. Well, let's talk about what you did do again. I know, right? Let's talk about these seven gems that are yes. glowing up. Okay, first of all, this title, mm -hmm. like, it's all, it's the thing right now, yeah. with the glow up and whatever. Exactly. So, what led you into this new book? So, self-care. The book is mainly about self-care. It takes a mental health approach to self-care. And so, the, the gem is, you know, somebody said, man, you just dropped the gem. It's like mm -hmm. you just dropped some very valuable information. Right. And then glow up. I talk about in the book about how when I first heard that term, glow up, it was a before and after picture. And it was like, man, the glow up is real. And I'm like, glow up? Hmm. So it takes two different meanings for me. Okay. It's the shine, you right? Mm -hmm. Like the glow. And then the grow up process. So since the like the before and after picture was a younger picture and an older picture, and then it, it's just like at one point I was this person, but now wow. This and do you go back and say like wow, like this is where I started, and then my journey? Because sometimes this journey is rough. Yeah, it's not very easy. Because it's rough, especially in this business where like you really are putting yourself out there and yeah. sharing a lot. Yeah. Of especially yourself. for me, um, it's very scary at times because people know my business, and I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> But, you know, I personally, there are a few tips and tabs about my personal life and how I personally handle each gym. Right. Um, but it's really more of research and a lot of psychological research about 
how we really should take care of ourselves. Okay, and the, there are a few things that I saw in here, and I really love that you were able to pull some quotes mm -hmm. from some super amazing people, yeah. Yeah. and uh, one of them which is Tina Turner, which Tina we Turner all love, favorite. and I love this, and tell me, I wanna know why you use it, and I'll tell everyone what it is. Sometimes you gotta let everything go, purge yourself. You will find that when you're free, your true creativity, your true self comes out. Right. Whoa. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a very, I right, just get like. Right. So that, and that quote again came from Tina Turner, one of my favorite rock, she's a freaking rock star. I love her and I love imitating so how her. how do you do that? How do you so find in the courage? So in my first book, I talk about the residue of marriage and divorce mm -hmm. and how I had to really let go of so many heartbreaks and disappointments and all of those ne all that negativity right mm -hmm. so in letting go of that process i really discovered who i was as a person wow yeah so letting go of the old stuff essentially gets you to that glow up now when people see me wow wow you know wow you look so different and so it's because i have journeyed through myself right for myself so that I can now be available for others. And it's not necessarily just all in the physical, right? No. Because when you when you notice a change in people, it's it usually for me, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, there's a whole new different kind of aura and energy. Yeah. And usually um, that also comes out in the amount of work that mm -hmm. they're doing. And mm -hmm. especially in this industry, mm -hmm. you know, the more events you go to, the more bookings that you get. Yeah. And it just seems like, wow, like you're on like this, you know, like, yeah. this, like this upswing, yeah. something's different. Yeah. So basically, you glowed up. I did. <laughs> I, glowed up. I glowed up for real. Okay, right, this is what is another. I want to another gem. Okay. You know, and this is from, of course, you know, our one of our favorites, Maya Angelou. That's and right. these things are just so deep, but they inspire. Okay, so it's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself to forgive, forgive everybody. And can I just say? That doesn't speak to me. Yeah. It screams yeah. and hollers at me because I will say that's one of my hardest. I still deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, I, how do you everybody. deal with that? I mean, how do you take that and use it and help yourself glow up? Forgiveness is a process. Mm -hmm. We have to stop the stigma of thinking, I forgive you. The statement instantly forgives a person. It doesn't work like that. It's a process. And essentially, we, and once you realize that forgiveness is really for you, mm -hmm. then the process becomes easier. It becomes lighter. The work becomes less heavy um, because you're doing that work for you. The forgiveness, I talk about that in, my, in the chapter self-detox, about detoxing. Ooh. About Ooh. detoxing from people, about detoxing from a lot of gunk that we have that sometimes goes back to our childhood mm. and it and it's not just people sometimes we hold ourselves back because we can't forgive ourselves for a decision that we made sometimes a, you know what you may have not thought was a good decision right okay once that decision is made that's it you have to move on yeah. and then maybe the next decision will be better yeah and we and when it comes down to other people they made a bad decision Right. And unfortunately, you were the result of that or right. you were, were impacted by it. Right. You were impacted by right. their bad decision. Right. And so even though they may not have forgiven themselves, because you don't know what that other person is going right. through, yeah. whoever, whatever situation yeah. has done anything to you, yeah. that's their decision. That's theirs. Right. The they breakup. The marriage, uh, divorce, the mm. school, whatever. I was like, what are you going to do for right. you right now? Right. All right, so with this book comes a, a, a journal. Yes. Right? And so so this goes together. And yes. so as I'm reading the book, so this is so that everyone can kind of take their own little notes mm -hmm. and, you know, their journey, start yeah. documenting their journey. So I'm really big on journaling. Uh -huh. My first book developed and was birthed out of my journal. Wow, okay. Um, I journal a lot. I write down everything. One, because I can't hardly remember anything. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but two, journaling is so therapeutic. And yeah. I talk about self-communicate as one of the gems in this book and how we, um, sometimes when we were younger, weren't really taught proper communication tools. Ooh. Effective yeah. communication. We right. all know how to communicate, right? but is it effective? Yes. So we can learn how to effectively communicate with ourselves through journaling. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so 
Uh, where can we get this book? So you can go to my website. Mm -hmm. My website is valtrunda.net. You can get the journal, the book. You can get all, all my that. other, all my other process, all my other um, products. Wonderful. From my website, valtrunda.net. So they can start from book one all the way to this new book. Yes. With the journal and all that, and yes. also it will be at the Portico. Uh, so if you're at the Portico Cafe, we will oh, also have okay, copies buddy. for you to purchase. Yeah. And all that good stuff. And after this interview airs and you see it, if you want a book, make a comment on our Facebook page, and I'll make sure that you get one. Yay! Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm so happy for you and I so appreciate it. excited. I've watched your journey. Yeah. And uh, it's just really fun to see everyone glow up. Thank you. I can't talk <laughs> about anything that I haven't been through. You know what I mean? I've been through it. I yeah. walked, I took the journey myself. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's how we take care of ourselves that ultimately makes us glow up, you know, and turns us into the person we really want to be so that we can be there for other people. There you go. And we'll be right back after this. For this week's mocha moment we can't wait to share it with you if you have any awesome pictures videos with your family your friends your homies y'all just hanging out doing some positive things hey we want to share it with our audience so make sure you send it to us via, via Instagram Facebook all of our website whatever you need to do email it to us we want to share your mocha moment this week 83 year old custodian um, was honored by the students at his school awesome. and they made him king for the day and it's just so adorable and it's important that we show our support for everyone that's important to us just like these children did for mr john take a look yo Whew. it has been a show we have one more show left for the season listen we thank you for being here with us. I think, what, this is our 22nd show? 22nd. All right, and- That's a lot of shows. That is a lot of shows. There's a lot of Fridays. A lot of hairdos. A lot of makeup. A lot of blazers. A lot of all of that, okay? <laughs> a lot of <laughs> Once again, we love you. We thank you. Please share the show with your friends and family. Make sure they like our page. Have a watch party. Have a watch party, yes. Especially next week for our finale. So we appreciate you. Make sure you follow us, Instagram, Facebook, um, Mocha Morning Show, YouTube. Email us if you need to. Once again, I am Keisha Boyd, your host. This is my co-host, Officially Jorge, and this has been this week's Mocha in the Morning Show. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Mwah. Don't need too much barbecue. <laughs> it is a holiday weekend. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs>